Alright, so data fetching is pretty easy. Make an API call to fetch some text and display it on a screen in a fancy way is just web dev 101. Huh? The problem is when you have a lot of users using your platform and you have these small gaps here and there that make your app difficult to use. So essentially it's a bad user experience. These users do not want to see those annoying loading spinners or experience any hiccups. They want everything to happen fast, which even though might seem unrealistic, is at least what we should aim for. Any UX problem out there, for the most part, can be solved in React using traditional methods. But these traditional methods take a heavy hit on the DX, which is the developer experience. So how about a structured way to handle these data related caveats? In comes React Query, a sidekick that takes away all your data fetching headaches. This not only enhances the developer experience, but some of these caching tricks that we'll see will extensively enhance the user experience as well. So this series is not going to be like an in-depth tutorial. I'll go over a few real life examples that you'd most likely come across in your dev journey and we'll show you how React Query just makes it easier and better. Also on a side note, it's called TanStack Query these days, but I might call it React Query in these videos, so do not get confused by it. Now let's quickly set up our project. I'll use Wheat as a bundler and PNPM as my package manager. Make sure you have PNPM installed before moving forward. So you can use NPM or YARN or any other bundler you want. I just find PNPM a lot more efficient than the rest, so I prefer PNPM. If you already have npm installed, just do npm install global pnpm and that will take care of the installation. Alright, so let's do pnpm create wheat and I'll call the application teach you example app. Teach you here stands for TanStack query. I'll select react as the framework, javascript and swc as the variant. Let's not burden ourselves with TypeScript for this example. I'll use SWC since it's much faster than your regular JavaScript based compilers. You can use whatever you want, won't really make a difference for this example. Now this will create our project and inside the project, I'll install the dependencies and then run it on the dev server. So let me go inside the project. We need to do pnpm install to install the dependencies and then pnpm run dev. This should take about 10 to 15 seconds. My bad. So my application is running on localhost 5173. Let me just open it. I'll need a few other dependencies as well. So react router to handle basic routing. Let me install it quickly. I'll also need tailwind to keep things pretty. So I'll just go to the tailwind docs to see the installation steps for wheat. So I'll need this command. I'll copy it. And instead of npm, I'll just do pnpm. Then I'll need to initialize the tailbit config file. Inside the file, I'll have to update the content section. So let me just go inside the file and I'll directly copy everything from here. Finally, I'll need to add these imports inside my global style sheet. So at the top, I'll just paste these three items. Just to test if Tailwind is actually working in our example, I'll add some Tailwind classes to one of the tags. So if I have, yeah, I have a paragraph tag here. Let me just add text 3xl font bold. If I go back in my app, ideally this should have worked. Oh, I do not have my dev server on. Yeah, now this should work. So you can see here that this is now a bit larger. X3XL essentially means like a heading one or a heading two. And it's also bold. So both of our tailwind classes are working. All right, so this looks good. Now let's set up a basic router for our app. So I'm planning to have three routes. One will be the root route, which will render the app component. And the other two routes will render a traditional data fetching example and a time stack query example. So let me just add it inside my main.jsx file and use create browser router. And inside this render block, I'll replace the app component with the router provider. 
and this router provider is going to take in router the one that we created here as one of its props let me just save this not sure why this created two separate imports i'll just copy this and add it to this import and get rid of the one here so for the without query component which is going to be the traditional data fetching component let's take a very simple example i first need to create a component so let me just create a pages folder and inside here i'll create without query dot jsx now the example is going to be a list of posts a very simple list of posts if you have had even a little bit of experience with react which i hope you do you must have seen something like this so we have three state variables here one for the actual data one to track if the data is being fetched aka the loading state and one to track the errors we make the api call inside the use effect to get the data handle errors if any and set the loading state to false once the data is fetched or if there's any error now if the loading state is true which it will be at some point since it's set to true by default so even for a split second there will be a loading indicator on the page this is the block that's responsible to show the loading indicator and if at all there's an error we return a ui for the error this block finally if all goes well we return the actual data i have sprinkled some styles here and there in the form of tailwind classes you can directly copy them if you want to they are not something that you should be worried about now this is the typical flow that you'll see quite often in a lot of code bases essentially you use use state and use effect to handle data fetching in your application while it does work for small applications and prototypes it may not be the most scalable solution for larger more complex applications like for instance this example only deals with fetching one entity which is the post list in a more real life scenario you could have multiple entities used in the same component and needs data fetching you can't go around and create this hook pair for all these entities i mean you can but you'll have to duplicate a lot of code which is just not maintainable in the long run the second and probably more concerning issue is optimization smaller applications do not have to worry about optimization in general but once the app starts to get more complex you'll more certainly start thinking about ways to improve your app's overall performance and experience tricks like caching automatic refetching or background data sync are some of the most common optimization strategies and i can tell you this by experience it's not something that you would want to implement manually also you ideally should handle your data fetching and state management separately in larger apps it's a good practice to separate concerns keeping data management and presentation logic separate for maintainability to solve this we'll be using tanstack query which we'll see in the next video let's keep things slow and try to understand every bit of it you now at least know what's the intention behind using this library in the coming videos we'll see how this library can improve your workflow and the overall performance of the application that's the thing that i like about this library it's not purely focused on improving the user experience and performance but also enhances the overall developer experience you'll see what i'm talking about so do subscribe for that and i'll see you in the next one